Hello, welcome to this week's Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host. Thank you very much for joining us. And us, of course, is my friend Cal Potter, who not only uh, is former state senator and representative um, on all kinds of state library boards at one time, um, and uh, history major, teacher. Um, old friend. Old friend. <laughs> <laughs> very old. <laughs> Well, I, as I just mentioned to you, I just went to my 60th anniversary of my class reunion, um, and that makes it... Uh, Sobering. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that uh, does uh, still do uh, is require that uh, I and you, uh, uh, because of our backgrounds especially, but also because we're citizens of Wisconsin, a progressive state once upon a time, and. Uh, the United States of America, and when we have issues like um, the uh, Klan and other things in Virginia, uh, loss of life, uh, it, it pays to occasionally stop and talk about uh, where we've come, how we've come, and uh, uh, how it's taken place so that people have an understanding and then they can uh, uh, remember what uh, the historical facts are rather than the emotional things. And uh, one of the uh, things that we talked about, of course, was uh, the Ku Klux Klan and, and uh, neo-Nazis in our first program, uh, the Civil War, uh, and uh, um, the, the good deal the South got out of the, uh, the war by, um, by Grant and uh, um, how they um, turned and uh, um, didn't share the power that they should have shared with everybody in the South. And today I'd like to talk about statutes. Believe it or not, statutes um, are controversial. You would think that <clears throat> a statue of Robert E. Lee sitting on a stone horse, winter, summer, spring, and fall, wouldn't be um, controversial, but it can be. Well, what I found very interesting is, uh, I don't know if it was NBC, one of the networks did a poll of Americans, should these Confederate statues be removed? And it was like 60 some percent of Americans said no. And I was at a meeting last week, a fellow with a big mouth, a conservative, started just lambasting people who would want to remove these. And, he was just, he said, they're works of art, they're part of their culture, let them, they can have their statues, they should remain up in the city square and so on. And this guy was, I didn't say anything because it wasn't, it was a sort of a social engagement and you know, in the right circumstances I probably should have bopped him on the head or something and said, you idiot. But uh, he was expressing an opinion that a lot of Americans have and surprising number of Americans have. They don't know why and how they got there. Well, most of these statutes, and I think statues and monuments were like 1,500 of them, I think, mm -hmm. um, have been put up. And they've been put up, you know, I think people have the stereotype, well, they're put up right after the war because everybody just loved Robert E. Lee mm -hmm. and they put the statue. Most of these statues and monuments were put up after the 19, 1890s and many into the early 1900s. And they were put up by people who were feeling their oats about white supremacy. They put in place uh, white power again after the Civil War. The North let the South do what the hell they wanted to do. And they took over all the government. Uh, blacks were excluded. Blacks were, well, excluded from bathrooms and from laundromats and bubblers and everywhere else they could do in schools and so on. And these were put up as a symbol of the old South, right. of where the whites ruled and blacks should know that they're in their place. And you know, a lot of those communities down there, 30, 40% of the, a lot of these towns were black people, mm -hmm. but they lived in hovels, they didn't have jobs, they were treated like dirt, and these center of the town statues were nothing more than uh, uh, an expression of white supremacy. Power. Power, oh, yeah. right. And, and so when we step back and say, well, who put them in there? Why were they put in there? Uh, when were they put in there? 
We can't come up with a hell of a lot of reasons why those things ought to main be maintained in the place they are. I don't go along with the idea that they ought to take a rope and destroy all these bronze statues. But what they ought to do is do what they did in European countries. Uh, when I was in Budapest and we were in Prague, uh, they used to have all these Lenin statues and Marx statues. Well, they took them and they've got a park someplace. They've trucked them off mm -hmm. to the side. This is what we used to have all over our town. If you want to go see them, fine. And remember what it was like years ago. If they're going to be used as a symbol of anti-racism, of what the past was, you know, let's put them in a museum or someplace, and, and, and that's fine. But to keep them in the, in the central part of a city that's probably 40, 50 percent black, where the power be, is still run by whites, um, there's something wrong with that community that they're going to defend having that symbol and not being sensitive to people. You know, it's the same way with the, the, the naming rights for schools or mascots. You know, you get these people who want redskins mm -hmm. or, or what. And, and I've had people, I used to chair the education committee, we'd have that bill all the time to do yeah. away with these racist mascots. And we'd have people come and say, it's say, well, our right to do that. I says, you got a community with a large Indian presence in your community and in your school, they don't like it. Why don't you be sympathetic? You know, do what South High School did. They went from the Red Men, you know, to the Red Wings. Mm. You can do this very easily, solve the problem, and not go around ticking people off and sticking a stick in their eye. What do you want to do that for? You know, only people with a, with a, with a peanut for a brain uh, go around doing that type of stuff, and I'll tell them that. And, and so when we used to have a hearing, I advanced the bill. Well, of course, it didn't go very far in the mm. legislature in most cases because uh, people represented schools that had the redskins, you know. Uh, and so what I'm saying is that these statues were reminiscent of a power play by whites to defend themselves, to pr bring back a culture of white supremacy. They weren't, couldn't bring back slavery, but they could back, defend and want to preserve the separation of the races of white supremacists. And, and so as a result, I think we ought to examine why they're there, who to put there, when they were there, and say, I think we could probably take some of these statues and move them into another part of town or into a museum, and we'll talk about why all this background on these things without making them a symbol of white supremacy mm -hmm. in a town in many of these cases, like Birmingham and so on, a very large black population. What do you want to do that to these people for? I mean, they got enough problems in life brought on by white people and there's discrimination. We don't need the statues up there, you know, and I'll tell people that, but 60 some percent of Americans still feel these statues ought to remain the way they are. Well, I'll, I'll argue the other side and hope for the best, I guess. Yeah. Um, when I was serving my country in the armed forces and I was drafted, so I was one of those willing but un, uh, did not volunteer to uh, go in. And uh, uh, one of the things we did, we went on maneuvers. I went to Yakima, Washington, and I went to the Carolinas, and uh, never went overseas at the beginning of the Vietnam War, but uh, was available. Matter of fact, we were packed to go to Cuba uh, during the Cuban uh, missile uh, war uh, uh, issue. Um, in the little town that uh, we did some maneuvers for uh, in for a couple of days, um, I was sitting out in a field with my guard's post, you know, and my empty M1 rifle <laughs> <laughs> and my aunt in the hot uh, uh, Carolina sun. And the wonderful Southern people would bring lemonade out to us with their kids and it was wonderful. But you go to the little town next door, they had one um, uh, laundromat in town. And what did it say about there? Whites only. Mm -hmm. They were being discriminated against. The power plays were there. Uh, and you go through um, some of the uh, southern areas where they have some of these statues. Don't even belong, you know, the, the, the soldier or the person uh, didn't even come from that state. And uh, the, whatever that was, the Ku Klux Klan or others wanted to push the statue because they liked Jefferson Davis or, or someone. Um, 
that's power, and that power intimidates people. Uh, just as the lynchings in the South, um, those blacks were, were, were very friendly when I was down there, but they were very careful. Mm -hmm. They were not free, yeah. as we would think of freedom. And so um, when I see those statues, we need freedom of expression. And you know, statues have their place, but they don't necessarily have to be on a place that belong to all the public. That's right. Um, especially when half of that public, or maybe even more than half of that public, uh, have been discriminated uh, with over the years. They should be at a place where it can be educational, as you mentioned earlier, uh, and uh, helpful. And so those people that think, oh, these are nice statues, well, some of them are put in there intentionally to intimidate people because they wanted their special, uh, they wanted to glorify the violation uh, of our Constitution and go against uh, the Union, and they lost. And they should, and they were given some pretty good deals by Grant uh, to let all the soldiers go, or almost all of them, uh, take their horses and, and the rifles that they needed to, for protection uh, and some food. And they were let to go home. Uh, another nation would have put them in prison camps and then mm -hmm. gone through them one at a time. We didn't do that. But the South did not treat others as friendly and as well as the Union side did. And then, as you mentioned, uh, there were leaders uh, in our country that uh, had their own problems, uh, that were racist and had, had issues that um, they grew up with and uh, uh, that was in their background. Yeah, we have, uh, we see this oftentimes in, in even in, in Christianity, we see people want to put up uh, the Ten Commandments monument in the, in the city park, you know, and I says, well, I'm a Christian, but I, I, I stop, sit back and say, well, you know, there are people out there who are Buddhist, there are people out there who are Islamic, there are people who are Jewish, there are people who are agnostic, there are people who are atheist out there. Um, you know, maybe it ought not to be in the city park. You know, that's how I look at it, sure. because I'm sensitive to the fact that they have a right to their own religion, and they have a right to believe the way they want to believe, and they should not feel intimidated that they can't believe the way they want to. That's the same thing with, you know, on the Indian mascot type thing. Be sensitive to the Indian community. And in the case of these monuments, it's being sensitive to people of color who have had a history, uh, going back not too far, who were slaves, literally slaves, and bought and sold as human beings. Um, we ought to sit back and use our, our heads you know, not be such a, a, an idiot, man. This, this whole argument and defending a lot of this is, is, is just ludicrous. It's foolish. It's stupid. You know, all we are just sit back and say, how can we heal these wounds? If they're, they don't like this statue there, maybe we ought to take that statue and put it in a museum. Let's put it at the side of town and we'll put up a, a, a plaque saying, where did it come from? Why is it here? And we'll educate people. Why we can't do that? I don't know. It's just, I guess there's a certain level of people out there that are dumber than a box of rocks, and, they want and I don't know how you can change it. And they want to dominate uh, people yes. by, by their own selfishness and their own yeah. position. And we had, uh, uh, Town of Ryan has, uh, if you've never been there, you should go out there because they have a, uh, a monument uh, for those Civil War, uh, War soldiers that went off and, and died. Uh, they just have a big monument there, and they list them all. Doesn't glorify them, just mention what units they were in, and that they served. And I think those things are very appropriate, but um, having something beyond that tends to intimidate uh, people or glorify um, a, a different aspect of uh, what should be intended. And we've run out of time, Cal Potter. We've run out of time. But we are doing our job because we wanted to do four programs, uh, four weeks in a row that deal with the issue that uh, confronted uh, Virginia, and we should talk about things based on history and, and philosophy and, and a variety of other things. So thank you for coming. Until next week, this has been Legislative Update.